I can give you lightning in a bottle, but I'm gonna need you to not drop the bottle. Everything bothers him. He's unbothered. He calls it unbothered, but that's what's cute because everything bothers him. He's bothered. I'm a botherina. I'm a botherina. What's up, everybody? We're just gonna get right into it because I am in a very good place right now, but at the same time, I'm in a very clear place. And I know that that's rubbing a lot of people the wrong way, not anybody that matters, but we're going to talk about it a little bit. And it's because, yeah, I do demand a lot of perfection out of people. And I think a lot of the stuff that I'm going to say on my podcast today can be applied to anything. So you don't necessarily have to be in stand-up comedy to be able to relate to it or, or to really understand. You're going to hear a chirping every once in a while. And that's just because I set the fire alarm off last night while the smoke detectors and they just keep chirping now. And it's very annoying. And I'm I'm tired of that, but it just is what it is. So you will hear that every once in a while, and it's going to get on my nerves pretty much every time, but I'm going to try to tune it out. I'm usually good at tuning out things I don't like, which is another thing that's bothered a lot of people. Here's the deal. Here's what's going on. Today is less about me being bothered and more about other people being bothered. Like I said, it, I'm doing so much right now. If you haven't seen, I've been posting a bunch of YouTube shorts and I've also been posting more consistent, longer form videos. So I'm doing that too. With everything that I have to do, I just don't have time for a lot of bullshit. And I know it bothers some people, but I can't let that worry me. I can't let that get in my way. I run on a pretty tight schedule and every Every once in a while, I'll get caught up doing something that is just for me personally, because I know that that's important for mental health breaks, you know, just to every once in a while be like, okay, I'm not going to worry about anything. I'm not going to think about anything. But that comes with me putting things out in a timed manner as far as my YouTube shorts. I'll have them scheduled out for a day. And so that will provide me with the break. So even when I'm on a break, it's not just a completely I'm letting everything go break. It's like everything's on autopilot and I get to not pay attention to that. But then on those same days, a lot of times I'll end up putting out a longer form video. So even though I won't have to worry about putting out shorts, I will st still have to worry about putting out a longer form video. And I don't mind any of this because right now I really am liking what it is I'm doing. But at the same time, it doesn't allow a lot of extra time and everything's got to be kind of one take, you know, like that's the way everything works with me. That's why if you've seen me out at the comedy spots, like, you know, doing really well, it, even at an open mic, it's because I I just see things as like, we just have to get things done. We have to make sure that we maximize our time. Why are we here? What's the point of being here? And I don't think a lot of the people that quote unquote don't like me, I don't think they think about that. It's like, yeah, if you want to waste all your time on open mics just as a social scene, I guess that's good for you and continue to do that. But for me, open mics have never been about just hanging out and being the cool guy. The last thing I ever want to be described as is a nice guy. Because if you don't know, in stand-up comedy, if you're described as a nice guy, if that's always the first thing people bring up about you, it means you're not funny. And the point of the exercise is to be funny. We're supposed to be good at stand-up. Everybody's supposed to be getting better. Everybody's supposed to be working on stuff. It's not about just like, let's go out and drink. It's not about let's go out and cause drama. It's not about any of that stuff. And I know some people would say that I've caused drama, but really, if you think about it, I haven't caused drama. I just haven't allowed people to be passive-aggressive with me. I haven't allowed people to sabotage me me at certain points. I haven't allowed people to get me to divert from what I'm doing so that they can do what they want to do. That's pretty much all of everything that I've ever been accused of. If you think about it, it really is. And I really feel like the people that these people call friends are actually a part of what will be their demise. Because for me, friends aren't about just having your back and always saying that you're doing the right thing. That's not friendship to me. To me, friendship is about being honest with people and making people be accountable for their behaviors and at the same time, yeah, you have their back. Like, I wouldn't necessarily go after one of my friends publicly, but I would behind the scenes tell them, hey, look, I don't think you're handling the, the, this the best way. Or sometimes I have to ask friends too, like, are you okay? Is there something going on? mental health wise because you're acting a little bit off lately like some of your behavior is looking a little bit crazy so is there something that needs to be addressed is there anything i can do for you as your friend as your actual friend not somebody's there that's there to enable you because that's what a lot of what people call friends are they're actually enablers 
And that can come in any form. It doesn't necessarily have to be with addiction. Sometimes it's with passive aggressive behavior. Sometimes it's with toxic behavior. Sometimes it's with abusive behavior. And all their friends are just like, yeah, you're my friend, so I'm not going to say anything that might ruffle your feathers. And it's like, no, that's not what friendship is about. Friendship is about every once in a while just being like, yeah, you're not doing things right right now. So why don't we see if we can get you back on track? Why don't we see if maybe we can head this off so you don't necessarily end yourself? And I don't mean like in a like suicide way or anything like that. I mean, end yourself in a way like where you just end up in situations that you don't want to be in and repetitive patterns, which is what happens with a lot of the people that supposedly don't like me. And I don't really feel like these people don't like me. I feel like these people don't like themselves is what the problem is. I feel like people don't like themselves and they use me as something to bounce that off of or something to reflect that to. Because I personally just don't give a lot of attention to a lot of people. And it's because if we're not making money together or if we're not making each other better at stand-up, then I don't really know why we would hang out. Like, I have family that I don't see as much as I'd like to see because they're in Phoenix. And so when I'm here in Vegas, it really is just about work and doing the things that I have to do rather than, like... Let me just hang out with my friends. Like I used to hang out with a friend that was very much like that. And every time I was with him, I felt like I was just wasting time. It's like, yeah, great. We had dinner. I could have had dinner at home and then gone back to working on more stuff that I actually need to work, be working on, like writing. You know, I want to write a lot of new stuff and I have a lot of new ideas coming in all the time. And for me, that's what it's about. It's about just constantly staying in motion to make what I want happen, happen. Because I'm not getting any younger. And it isn't my birthday that brought this on, even though I think my birthday did somewhat trigger it or make me feel even more like, okay, well, what are we doing now? Like, why don't we move on to actually doing things that are productive instead of spending a bunch of time just having fun with friends. Like, I'm sober, you know, I'm not AA sober. I'm very clear about that. I'm not part of any program, but I've chosen to just be sober. I don't want to do anything. I feel like the best way for me to run is completely clear, is completely 100% just sober me. And I know that that doesn't work for everybody and that's not everybody's thing and it doesn't have to be everybody's thing. I don't try to force that on anybody. I don't think that you're fucking up if you're not doing it that way. Technically, I think you're fine whatever you're doing. You're doing what you need to do just like I'm doing what I need to do. But I do have friends that will be like, do you want to go get high or do you want to do some coke? Or I, I'm coke I haven't done in over 10 years. I think it's been even longer than 10 years to tell you the truth and so it's like no I don't want to do coke why would I want to do coke and like smoke weed everybody knows that I'm not smoking weed so I don't really know why people would specifically ask me now if somebody tries to pass me a joint I think that's just polite because you know I'm around them I'm in the circle and a lot of times if you ever notice I'll just pass it to the next person I don't act like or you know anything like that. I don't have any judgment towards any of that stuff. You know, I'll just pass it or sometimes I'll just step back and let them hand it across, you know, skipping me. But I do appreciate that because to me, that's good manners. You know, I just happen to be standing with them. So of course they're going to offer. But when people specifically ask me if I want to go off and get high with them and it's like, you know, I'm sober. So I don't really know why you would even ask me that in the first place. Or do you want to see me jump off my goals? Do you want to see me not doing what I need to be doing? Because that's what it's about for me. It's about me needing to do what it is I need to do and not be bothered with getting high, not spending that time high. I'm not at my best when I'm high. And some people are, but I am not. So I don't think that there should be any reason that people shouldn't understand that. And like I said, the people that hang out on the comedy scene just to hang out on the comedy scene, I'm fine with them being there. But every once in a while, they'll try to cause drama or they'll try to like, you know, get in my way. And it's just like, yeah, stay all the way out of my way. Because in case you haven't noticed, I'm very good at making sure that people aren't in my way when I need them not to be. I'm very good at making sure people are completely disabled. No, You're a non-issue now. Now you've worked yourself into being a complete non-issue. And I don't have to name names because if you've been watching this podcast long enough, I've named enough names and I've also proved that those people aren't around like they used to be because I'm around. Because I just made it so, okay, well, 
that that took care of you. And so I try to help people in that way just from ending themselves because in that way I will be a friend to you by just letting you know that I'm not the best place for that. I'm not the place you want to put any of this because I'm at the point now where I feel if you do anything to try to get in my way, I'm definitely going to make it so you're completely a non-issue. You're going to be stranded on the side of the road of life is what's going to happen if you mess with me. Just stay out of my way. That's why I'm staying out of everybody's way because I know I don't want anything. It's like the saying, don't start no shit, won't be no shit. I like I don't want shit with anybody right now. I'm working on so much stuff that I don't have time for shit with other people. And that's why I'm so aggressive in the way that I handle things when I need somebody to get completely out of my way. It's because it really is about that for me. It really is about... I need you to completely be a non-issue so that I can get back to what it is I'm doing. So the quicker I can make it so you're a non-issue, the quicker I'm going to get back to what I'm going to do. And then I'm happy to be back where I'm at, which is completely not bothered, completely unbothered by everything that's going on around me. And I, I'm sorry to rattle at the beginning like that, but I'm really trying to just make it clear that it, you don't have to be a professional to act like a professional. And that's what I think a lot of people struggle with is they think that they have to wait for these things ha to happen in order for them to be a professional. Like once I get a TV credit, then I'll really start to focus on this. Once I get to being on the road, then I'll really start to focus on this. Well, why don't you just start living like you're doing all that stuff now and then all of that stuff will come. That's the way I've always seen it and that's how I got to where I am. And I don't pretend that, you know, I'm... Well, I am kind of killing it in life right now is what I got to tell you. But um, I don't pretend that I have everything figured out when it comes to the stand-up world. I've definitely dropped the ball in my own career a couple of times when I was younger. And I don't regret that because I feel like if all of that had come back then, I don't think I would have been ready for anything. Back then, I was still drinking. Back then, I was still getting high. Back then, I was still involved in toxic relationships and toxic behaviors. So I don't feel like things have happened in any way that has been out of sequence. I think things have been happening the way that they're supposed to happen for me to mature to the point where I would be ready for everything that's going to come my way. So I don't live in any kind of regret, but at the same time, I do have a certain focus now because I realize what my purpose is. I realize what it is I'm supposed to do it, be doing. I realize where I'm supposed to be. Now it's just a matter of making everything happen so that I get there at the time that I'm supposed to get there, which everything has been going pretty well according to plan but every once in a while there will be something that gets annoying you know with the situation that I have to handle where it's like okay well let's see exactly what's going on here you know there was a lighting situation that happened that like it's you know because I'm very clear about my lighting there's a certain way that I like to be lit this is very close to the way that I like to be lit and so there was a situation where I was being recorded for a particular project. And I expect that if you're a professional videographer, then you should know the way lighting works. And I wear makeup right now. I'm not wearing any makeup at all. I didn't even fill in my eyebrows, which in case you didn't know, I am gay like that. And I do fill in my eyebrows, but I didn't even do that. You know, so right now I'm kind of chill, but like I'm very well lit. And so I expect that a professional can light me as well as I light myself when I'm recording a podcast in my bedroom. And instead, I was lit from one side and then like there was very little lighting on the other side. And so it gave kind of a phantom of the opera effect. And that's why I said I can give you lightning in the bottle, but I need you not to drop the bottle. Because that's what it's like for me, because I, I was being interviewed and... I am really good at being interviewed at this point. I'm really good at giving you the answers you want. I've been shot for a couple documentaries in the past, and I'm very good because if you didn't know, a lot of times when you're shooting documentaries, and this is for the people that are maybe newer in stand-up and will end up getting these kinds of opportunities, like when you get shot for a documentary, a lot of times they want you to repeat the question while you answer the question. That's the way it works when your so they'll ask you you know so how did you get started in stand-up and then you're like well i started in stand-up when you know what i mean or i started in stand-up blah 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 and so um you know like i'm good at all of that stuff now because i've been doing this for so long 
But uh, if I'm not well lit or I don't have a, the confidence in the people that are around me, because that was the place that I made the mistake, is I assumed because I was friendly with this person and this person is a professional at this, I assumed that they were just going to light me the way that I needed to be lit. I assumed and I did ask them about it and I did let them know, you know, like this is probably the best way to light me. And I try not to tell people how to do their jobs. But at the same time, I know the mistakes a lot of people make. And so I try to avoid any of that on this one. I wasn't trying to micromanage at all because it is a fine line between being particular and micromanaging. And so I was very chill about it. And then I had seen like a rough edit and I was like, surely this is not the way that this is going to come out. But I just kept that to myself. I didn't ask about it because, again, I'm not trying to tell anybody how to do their job. So then we get the actual final product and it looks exactly like what I thought was the rough cut. And I was just like, what is happening right now? Like, why am I lit like the Phantom of the Opera? And then the person tells me, well, I wanted to show the contrast between dark and light and the pull between dark. And I was just like, nobody wants your artistic fucking vision. This is show business. Everybody wants to look their best, period. That's all anybody wants. Nobody cares about what you're trying to show. Besides, it's distracting to the viewer. Like it's, there's not like, I'm very honest about the fact that I've had silicone removed from my, from my face. So there are imperfections. There are things that I want to wash out. So I don't know how you can get, not get that is what's hard for me to understand. It's like, why would you think that I do my makeup? If I wanted an e uneven look, I would have wore uneven makeup. If you wanted to create an uneven effect, then you could have done that afterwards in post instead of lighting me a particular way and making it so there's no way to fix that later on. There's no way to take off the filter. There's no way to change what it is you're doing once you've already shot it a particular way. Now the decision has been made. And I have a lot of approval over what happens with this footage so I could have just said that I didn't want it to come out that I didn't you know want it used is what I could have done but this is an actual production and it there was quite a bit of money put into it and so I don't want to be the person to make it so that they lose their entire investment because I don't like the way I'm lit so now I was in a position where it's between me being unhappy with what comes out or the look of what's coming out and coming off looking like a diva to the point that I cost everybody a lot of money. And so I chose not to make it a deal, but it was very hard for me to just accept that and not be angry. And I'm still working on not being fully angry about it just because you know, I let a lot of stuff go, but sometimes I just feel like with my friends and like I said, this person that was in charge of that part is a friend of mine and I always try to make my friends look their best and not just physically, but I mean in general, like if there's an opportunity I can turn you on to, if there's a situation that I can get you involved with, if there's a professional situation, I always try to make my friends look their best. So if I expect you to do the same in return and then you don't deliver on that, suddenly I don't feel like we're friends anymore. And that might sound dramatic to a lot of people, but that's another thing people need to get over. You don't get to decide for me or anybody else what they're allowed to put up with and not put up with in their life. We all only have one life to live. One life to live. Soap opera says, oh, that's Jody Watley, right? I'm looking for a new love. I'm dating myself here. I shouldn't even admit. Jody Watley. I don't even know who that is. But anyway, um, <laughs> like we all just have one life to live. So anything that you don't like, anything that you don't want to put up with, don't put up with it. And if it's not within your control, like if it's, you know, like somebody at work that you don't like and you have no choice because you work there, make it your goal to work to the point where you don't have to be in a situation where you have to work with people that you don't want to work with. Because at this point, I will sometimes choose to put up with people that I don't necessarily like the most because I want to do what it is that I'm going to do or I've been asked to do and I don't want to be a problem and ask that those people be taken off. But 
I have the option to do or not do pretty much anything that I want to be involved with or don't want to be involved with. There aren't a lot of choices being made for me right now. There aren't a lot of situations that I'm just being thrown into where I don't have a lot of control. And it's because I've set my life up that way. It's because I'm very clear with the people around me about the fact that if I don't like somebody, if I don't fuck with you, then I'm not going to be on anything with you. And that's where I'm at with this particular person. Like, yeah, we can be friendly. We can be cool. And there's one engagement that I have to finish out with this person on the professional level. They're not in charge of lighting me or anything technical like that. But after that, like I said, I'll be friendly with them, but I won't choose to work with them anymore in the future. And I've already let all the people that would try to put me in that situation know that I'm just not going to be on any projects with that particular person. If I can't sit down with confidence, because that's what I did. I sat down with confidence, just expecting that they were going to handle things that the way they needed to handle them. There was even like a particular, well, the way that everything is shot, because like I said, it's documentary. And so the way everything was shot is I was, I asked cause you know, I had stuff on me and I, you know, like it gets on my nerves having stuff in my pockets when I'm trying to like have a conversation, you know, and I did have cigarettes in my pocket and, uh, a wallet and keys. And so I wanted to have everything out of my pockets and there wasn't really a good place for me to put it, or I didn't feel like there was a good place for me to put it. And I didn't want to lose anything or forget anything. I wasn't worried about anybody stealing anything that was like, pretty closed, you know, and so I wasn't worried about anything like that. But I was just like, you know, I can just put it between my legs if that's, you know, not going to be in the shot. And I asked specifically, you know, where is this going to be shot? Because if it's, you know, if it's going to be from chest up or, you know, like ribs up even, then nobody will see. They're like, oh, no, we won't get that. So I see the footage and you can see that there's stuff between my like this is what is the matter with you? Why would you not understand that that's not like I don't just ask this because I'm and I was clear about that. I was like, because I'll just put it here if you're not going to be shooting it. Like, why would you still shoot it that way? Or why would you not say like this? <sighs> I just, I don't get what people are doing. And that's why I don't want to fuck with a lot of people that don't just automatically know this kind of stuff. And a friend of mine asked me last night, they were like, was it uh, that they were trying to be malicious or was it that they were incompetent? And I explained the situation. They were like, so incompetence. And it's like, yeah, it, <laughs> it is incompetence. And I guess you don't want to say that because it sounds mean, but at the same time, you have to call a spade a spade. And that is just incompetence. And if you're incompetent, I don't want anything to do with you. Like I said in the past, I don't know if you guys have heard me say this before, but I would rather deal with somebody that's evil or has uh, negative intentions than deal with somebody that's truly stupid. Because at least with the person that has negative intentions, you can work on that. You can have them uh, fix that behavior or they can work past that. Because I have seen people go, go from borderline evil to being like chill and cool and like evolving. You know, I've literally seen that happen with some people, even some people that I've had problems with in the past. And now we get along really great and they are really good people. They really have worked on themselves and grown past a lot of that stuff. But that also takes accountability. The first step to recovery is admitting that there's a problem. So when people are willing to admit, yeah, I have been evil or I have not necessarily been the, ni the nicest person or the best person that I possibly Possibly could be then they can work from there and that's a great place to work from but when you're dealing with somebody that's truly stupid or incompetent there's really no fixing it because they're not doing it on purpose it's just their brain doesn't work that way and for me I just can't deal with people that don't like you've got to be detail oriented in a way and I know some people would think I'm the opposite because I will look really relaxed about things but even when I look relaxed about things a lot of times I'm still keeping track of all the stuff it is that I need to do so that everything comes out the best way possible. Any project I've ever been involved with, you know, whether it's a taping, a documentary, even my podcast, it's like I'll be super fun and I'll look like I don't have a care in the world. But that's because 
usually, well, you know, if I'm going to do a taping, then the night before I have really worked on my stuff. I've been working on all my stuff leading up to. So the day of the actual shoot, I can be very relaxed and very fun and not really have to be going over notes the whole time. And I can look very carefree and I don't do that. So I look like I just roll in and do what it is I'm supposed to do. It's not for that reason at all. It really is so that I do have that confidence of being like, okay, I know my material. I've been getting on stage. I'm limber. I'm ready to go. So all I have to do is get in front of the camera and do what it is I'm supposed to do and the lighting people and the camera people are going to do what they're supposed to do and the editing people are later on going to do what they're supposed to do and as long as everybody's doing their job then there really is no problem and everything will be great so for me that's the way I like to work. I like everybody around me to be able to handle their shit, me be able to handle my shit. And I've been on some pretty big tours, so I know that this isn't at all unacceptable or this isn't at all out of the realm of possibility. Like, I've talked about it before to friends. I don't think I've talked about it on the podcast, but when I was working with Gabriel Iglesias or when Gabriel Iglesias brought me on tour, that runs like a machine. It is truly a machine. And there are there's a way that things work, you know, where um, there's a person that's in charge of the travel. There's a person that's in charge of the food. There's a person that's in charge of the little errands, like if you need somebody to go get you cigarettes or something like that. And so with somebody being char in charge of everything, it's like you don't ask people to do things that are outside of their job and people are really good at their job. So if it's something to do with a lighting cue or it's something to do with a sound cue or it's something to do with something on stage, then there's a person to ask for that. Uh, if it's something to do with the travel schedule, there's a person to ask for that. If you need, you know, your itinerary, there's a person to ask for that. So. I know that things can work this way. And in a lot of cases, things do work that way, even when it's not that big of a production. But when you have people that don't know what they're doing or don't understand what it is they're supposed to be doing, that's when things get sideways. And that's when I get very annoyed because I'm like, I know that this can run better than the way it's running right now. I know that there is a better way for this to be done than the way it's being done. And people will try to get mad at you for that. Right now, I'm having a situation with my roommate, and I probably shouldn't talk about that on the podcast, but I'm going to talk about it on the podcast because that's what my podcast is about, and that's what's happening in my life right now. My roommate, uh, the, the smoke alarm that you keep hearing, that little chirp, is because this... These smoke alarms are really sensitive and I don't know why and I'm going to call the office and ask about it and find out what can be done about it because they're really sensitive. And I've been making my breakfast. I always post on my stories about my breakfast. I've been making my breakfast for years. It's not like I'm new to cooking. It's not like I don't know how to cook. It's and the co things I cook are for the most part very basic. Bacon and eggs, sausage, you know, toast some days. It's all very basic. And so for me to be setting off the alarm with the frequency that I'm setting it off because I'm making bacon is really getting on my nerves. And that may sound like a small thing to most people, but when you're having it happen probably every other day, it really is a frustrating situation. And so I've learned to not have that happen by turning the fan on. Like that's what will do it. And even though you would think because I've been... I do my bacon in the oven, you know, that way I don't have to mess with it and frying pan and grease popping and that annoying, which that I can do too. But, you know, so I'm very used to the way that I do things. And so with that happening, I did, I do, didn't used to ever have to turn on the oven fan. And the last place I lived in didn't even have an oven fan. And so now I have to turn on that fan and I've learned that if I turn on that fan it probably won't happen last night it happened with the fan on which was very annoying but anyway um so the other day I'm making my breakfast and I uh well it wasn't even breakfast time but I felt like having breakfast and so it's evening and I decided to make something to eat and I turned the fan on and my roommate is on the couch watching tv which I don't you know, I don't hang out in the living room almost ever, pretty much never in the living room, especially like I'll, I'll eat in the kitchen, but I don't hang out in the living room while I eat in the dining room. And 
what happened was I had my earbuds in and I'm watching something on my phone and eating my breakfast and the fan is on and my roommate's like, I just see her mouth move. <laughs> like, let me not tell the story any other way than the way it went. I just saw her mouth move and I didn't know, like I could see she was talking to me, but I didn't know what she was saying. So I'm a polite person. So I take out my earbuds to hear what she has to say. And then she's just like, is that the fan? And I was like, and the reason that I paused like this is because in my head, what I wanted to say was, bitch, you know good and goddamn well that's the fucking fan. What, did you think I was landing a jet in the kitchen? Like, what do you mean is that the fan? Or did you have me take my earbuds out so you could be passive aggressive? Do you think that's what I want to do with my time right now? But instead, I didn't pause at all for her and just without skipping a beat, I was like, yeah, I went ahead and turned the fan on because I didn't want the smoke to cause the fire alarm to go off or the smoke alarm to go off. So, you know, it's what it is. And so um, then she was like, <laughs> you know, like that's literally what she started doing. And uh, for me, I was just like, can you stop acting like a baby and an asshole? And but I didn't say anything about it. Then a couple of weeks back and I'm just telling you guys just to show like I try to like not make a thing of this. Right. I try to not acknowledge that people are acting a particular way and I just expect them to understand I'm not going to change. I am who I am. I do what I do. You design your feelings around that. Don't make any of this my problem. Like, and that's really the way I feel in almost every situation is I don't change being me because you're you and you don't change being you because I'm me. But at the same time, we really shouldn't have a problem about things as basic as me making breakfast. I'm not in an abusive relationship. I don't have to wait until you think it's okay for me to make breakfast. I don't have to explain why the kitchen fan is on. You should already know. You've complained before about the smoke alarm going off. And she doesn't really cook ever. She just makes or gets food from either her work or she eats while she's out, which cool if that's the way you live your life cool. I don't have a problem with that. I'm going to make, not going to make a deal about that. I don't care at all where you eat or how you eat or if you eat for that matter. If you choose to be anorexic and not eat altogether, then don't eat. I mean, like, I'm not, that's not my life. That's not my problem. So, uh, that was that, but I didn't make a deal of that at all. I just was like, mm, I'm just going to let her live through whatever she's living through. You know, if you want to be mm, 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 whatever you're convulsing about, go ahead and convulse. But a couple weeks back when I was going to Colorado Springs, my friend Bruce had to pick me up late at night and... When I first moved in, because you got to understand that I didn't need to have a roommate. I'm not in that position where it's like I need Vegas isn't that expensive and you can get a one bedroom apartment affordably here. Yeah, things have gone up because, you know, with pandemic, it caused things to go up. So that's that's a reality. But at the same time, I didn't need to get a roommate. I did like my apartment. And really, like I've discussed before, I probably shouldn't have moved out. She had hit me up out of nowhere and I didn't know her that well, but we were always cool when we would see each other and told me that she wanted to get another roommate because her roommate was moving out. And so like it was all it all felt kind of it felt like kismet. <laughs> so. Uh, cause you know, my lease was about to be up. She was hitting me up right before. And yeah, the area is a nicer area, but it's not necessarily a geographically desirable area for me, but I can work around that because I wanted to work more on online content. So I wasn't really worried about being cl that close to the strip. Now I realize that I just like living in that area. So once my lease is up here, I will move out and go back to my side of town, the side of town that I like, which some people would call the ghetto or the hood, but I like like living in the kind of area when, we, when me and Beige are out walking, somebody might get punched in the face. It's not going to be me, so what do I care? It's not going to be Beige, so what does she care? We live our lives. We have a good time. That's what we like is being ratchet. So 
here I am in this nicer area, suburban. People would admit this is a nicer area. This is a nice, con nice building, nice apartment, technically, besides this bitch-ass smoke alarm. But, you know... Uh, so overall, I was like, yeah, sure, you know, like I, I'll live here now. Also, there was a situation, though, when I first came here, because to me, a dishwasher was an important thing because my dishwasher at my other place never worked. And before that, I've always lived in places where I had to do dish dishes. You know, there either wasn't a dishwasher or at the last place, the dishwasher didn't work the best. And trying to get them to take care of that just turned out to be an exercise in futility. And so I just let that go. And I was like, so when I moved in here, I asked first question I asked, you know, before I moved in, I should say when I just came to talk to her about it, when she asked me if I wanted to be her roommate, if I would consider being her roommate, because like I said, I did. I wasn't at all destitute. I wasn't looking for a place to stay. Uh, I asked her specifically, I was like, uh, you know, does your dishwasher work? And I told her, I was like, that may seem like a silly question, but you know, I'm tired of doing dishes. So does your dishwasher work? And she said, Oh yeah, it works fine. And she said it like that. Oh yeah, it works fine. I was like, okay, cool. So then like two days after I move in, which this was in December, like two days after I move in, cause I hadn't needed to do dishes or there was nothing, you know, like I was eating cause since I was moving, I would eat fast food. You know, one day I went to five guys with AJ and, like it was just a lot of like I, I took forever to move because I had like several days to do it or whatever. You know, I took my sweet ass fucking time. But uh, yeah, so it was that kind of situation where, you know, I w didn't have to worry about it. And then like two days after I move in, she was like, oh, yeah, the dishwasher doesn't really work. So and I felt like in my head, it was like that same dishwasher that I asked you about first thing when I came to talk to you about this. So I already felt kind of like, okay, we're not off on the best foot because you could have been honest with me when I told you that a dishwasher was important to me. Since then, she's changed the story. The dishwasher kind of works, but she doesn't like the way something works about it. And I've used the dishwasher a couple times. It seems to work okay. I don't know exactly what the problem is with the dishwasher, but it, it you know, whatever it is, what it is. Um, but okay. So we get to, um, my friend Bruce in January came to pick me up because we were going to go on the road when we went to Colorado Springs and I was taking beige with me and it just made more sense for Bruce to pick me up and drop me off, you know, like after we were done with the gig. So we had to go to Cal Colorado and, um, he came late at night, you know, it was like a maybe close to 1230 or something like that, you know, like just after midnight. And um, she had already gone to bed and I was getting my stuff. And so Bruce came over and Bruce has a loud voice. You know, he just naturally has a loud voice. So he came in and Bijou, of course, she has a loud voice too. And <laughs> so when Bruce came, she hadn't seen him in a while. So she was loud about it. And I did give her a quick, like, you know, hey, we got to stop this, Bijou. And so I made her stop barking. And then Bruce started barking. Just like, <laughs> But, you know, Bruce started talking and he has this booming voice and stuff like that. And I did ask him, like, you know, and I was nice about it because, you know, I get that she's asleep or whatever. But also when I first moved in, I told her because I sleep odd hours, I was like, I'm not at all a light sleeper. So if I'm asleep in my room and you're, you know, living life as a regular person doing what you have to do. I don't have any problems with that. The volume of the TV, I don't care about that. You doing dishes, you, whatever you do, you do. And I'm always very clear with people about that. That's the way I grew up, you know, where my mom, and I know that that's why I'm so good at sleeping through everything. Well, that and the fact that I've slept on fucking sidewalks and in my car and, you know, comedy life has been a lot of, you know, a lot of not always sleeping in the most comfortable and so that too but like from when I was young very young I remember my mom would say that you know because I'd go to take a nap or maybe my dad would take a nap or somebody would you know whoever was napping uh if you were trying to like you know be like hey so and so is asleep my mom would be like no 
You know, everybody's still living life. If they need to take a nap, then they take a nap to, to go to sleep. But not everybody's going to, the world doesn't stop because you take a nap. And so that's the way I was raised, you know, and me even full on sleeping. I don't care what she does. And so I was very clear with that, with her on that from the beginning. She said the same. Okay, cool. So it's cool. So yeah, I will tell Bruce out of courtesy, you know, just to kind of bring it down a couple octaves if he can. But I'm, you know, not tripping about her or whatever. And she comes out and she's like, what the fuck? While she, you know, while she's going to the bathroom or whatever. Again, I have to just control myself and just pretend like it didn't happen. Even though you're making my company uncomfortable right now. Because we're just going to be here that long. And that's really all it was. Was just, you know, I was like getting my st the last couple of things that I had to grab. Just so that we can go on our trip, you know, go perform for a couple of days. But now she makes my my company uncomfortable by being like, what? the fuck when she comes out of her room and then goes to the bathroom ah! and it's like you know what are you what are you doing right now but again i keep my mouth shut because really i felt like go back to fucking bed if you're that fucking tired and what whatever the fuck you're doing right now stop it go back to bed act like an adult i don't know what you think's happening right now or exactly what you think this is going to accomplish but that's not the way we act as adults even if you had a problem, you came out and was like, you know, can you guys keep it down a little bit? I was asleep. Like, you know, like some, even then I'd be like, bitch, shut up. I mean, like, but I'd still just politely be like, okay, yeah, I'm sorry. But this is what happens, right? Um, then there was another time when I'm on the phone and it's late and I have my earbuds in and she comes out and she's like, you're talking kind of loud right now. And it's like, cause you know, what I forgot to mention is when I told her that I like noise doesn't bother me when I'm sleeping, do what you have to do. One time I was living in this apartment with another roommate. This was forever ago, you know, cause I didn't have roommates for a long time there. Um, but there was this situation where I lived with this guy and they were doing something to the apartment and they had warned me because it was going to be they were getting it ready for renovation and we were getting ready to move out. And so they had this agreement where they paid us a lot of money. Well, they paid him a lot of money. He offered me some of the money, but he had always paid the bulk of the rent and it was his apartment. And he so he got paid a moving fee because they wanted to gentrify not only the area, but, you know, like completely renovate the building. And so with that being a part of the process, there was a situation where they would buy you out of your living situation and your lease, and they would give you a pretty good amount of money from what I hear for moving. And he had offered me some of that money. And I was like, yeah, that's all you like, you don't worry about giving me any of that money. But there was this part of the agreement where they got to start the renovations, his specific agreement where they got to start part of the renovations while we were still there, you know, in our last days there. And so there was a point where they came to do some renovations, like, you know, like really demo is what they were doing. They were demolishing some shit inside, like downstairs or whatever. And I remember opening the door for them, you know, like they knocked on the door and I let them in and they were like, it's going to be loud or whatever. And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. I don't care. Do what you guys have to do. And it felt loud. You know, this was before I had beige, way before I had beige, before I was a mother. But um, so it felt, I guess, loud. <laughs> but, you know, I had no problem sleeping through any of it. Every once in a while I wake up and be like, well, that sounds loud or whatever but then i'd go right back to sleep like and i definitely didn't get up and like mm, i didn't say anything you know i was that was part of the agreement i don't care i told them i was fine and i was fine you know I, I slept through everything but the point of the story is i wake up and it's completely the downstairs is just completely ripped apart like i really couldn't believe i slept through all that so when I say I can sleep through anything, I'm fine sleeping through anything. Well, when I told her that, that I could sleep through anything, I was just like, you know, um, let me know if there's anything, if I'm ever being too loud or whatever. And she was like, oh, no, I'll be fine. I, but again, like I realized now that what was happening at the like, you know, the way that I ended up in this apartment was she really didn't want to lose her apartment and not having the roommate. I, I know that she could afford this apartment on her own, 
But not having the roommate, she wouldn't have had as much expendable income. And so she really wanted to find somebody that would move into this place right when she needed them to. And so she, you know, was willing to lie to me and make it seem like she was cooler than she was and that, you know, everything, the, the, the dishwasher work, like everything was fine until I moved in. And then I'm sure she thought once I moved in that she would mold me to be, well, bitch, I'm not going to change what I am and who I am and act like now I have an abusive husband that I have to schedule my eating around or when I use the kitchen fan or whatever the fuck you're thinking isn't going to happen. So like that's where we're at now. Yesterday we had an argument because she decided to clean my toaster. She's been doing passive aggressive stuff lately. Like um, I am a tidy person. I'm not the mo I'm not OCD. And so, you know, every once in a while, something will be out, you know, like uh, I had chips and they're Mexican chips. So they have the, you know, the bag that you can close again with the little twisty tie. And so, uh, you know, I had been eating some chips and Carlos homemade salsa, but uh, that's what I was eating. And so I was eating chips and salsa and I left my chips on a part of the counter. And then like my butter was also on that same part of the counter, but nothing's like, you know, so messy or whatever and the chips were like fully tied off and you know like and I wouldn't even care if she moved them but like the way she moved them where she moved them you know it really was like a get your shit type uh you know like and so when I came out and I saw it I noticed but I didn't really say anything and then she was said she was going to clean the kitchen the other day which I've cleaned the kitchen before it's not really the kind of thing you have to announce but okay cool if you want to let me know you're going to clean the kitchen then clean the kitchen but uh so she let me know she was going to clean the kitchen and I was like whatever you know but apparently while she was cleaning the kitchen because I came home and you know a couple days later and I noticed that she had uh clean my toaster, which like, cool, you know, nice, I guess, you know, I, whatever. Um, but you know, I didn't think anything of it. So yesterday I was making toast and when I was making the toast, um, all of a sudden the smoke alarm started going off and that's all I was making. Literally, I wasn't making eggs, bacon, nothing. I just was making toast. And so the smoke alarm went off. And I was like, from to just toast is setting the smoke alarm off now. So I went in there and this the toast had burnt and the toaster was all the way up to the highest setting. And I know, you know, if you have a toaster, you know, you don't mess with the settings. Like even when you're cleaning it, you just like, you know, you don't you have your setting where you like it, you know, you find, you figure that out and you leave it there. And so I like, I didn't change the setting on my toaster. And so the dog started going crazy and she has a little dog too. And he's a cool little dog, you know, um, I don't have anything against her dog. He's, you know, I take him out to go potty when she has to work long or whatever. And he took a nap with us the other day. And if you ever watch my stories, you'll see him sitting with us. Like, you know, I'm cool with her dog, but he got especially scared. Like Bijou, yeah, the noise will bother her or whatever, but she takes my cues. So when I tell Bijou, everything's all right, you know, and I just open the window or whatever, she's like, all right, well, if he says everything's all right, he hasn't been wrong this long. And so, you know, that's kind of our, our thing. Me and Bijou is like, she takes my cues. Well, he was really nervous. And so, you know, I let him sit with me and that kind of stuff and try to calm him down and, you know, I'm not going to not be nice to her dog or whatever. And but I was annoyed because, you know, like you hit my setting and it made the toe and I was working on stuff. And so, you know, like it was just a, an inconvenience that I didn't need. But I wasn't mad. I was just like a little annoyed. So I did send her a text message just to let her know, like, you know, next time you're, you know, or I, what did I say? I was like, uh, you must accidentally hit the setting on the toaster. So if you could just be mindful of that in the future, it would be appreciated. That's what I said. And then, uh, something like that, you know, and that's not verbatim, but something like that. And I was trying not to come off bitchy because I wasn't mad, but like I said, I was annoyed and I'm trying to calm the dogs down while well, the dog, her dog down. Um, and so, it like for me, it wasn't really a thing. And then she was like, you know, 
I well, I don't ever toast anything, so I don't know how I would have hit it, but I'll watch it. LOL. You know, that's what she sent back. And I just don't deal well with passive aggressive. What was the LOL about? And like, you know, I didn't change the setting on my toaster. So unless there's a fucking ghost in the apartment that's trying to make sure that I burn my toast, I don't know what it is we're talking about right now. And so I sent her a message back because that's where she had put my chips and my butter. And I was like, it might have been when you were passive aggressively putting my chips and my butter in the corner. And then she sent me back. Are you serious right now? And I was like, yeah, you're kind of being passive aggressive lately. And it's not something that I want to deal with. And then she tried to say, oh, I'm passive aggressive. Like I'm passive aggressive. There's a lot of things I am, but not passive aggressive. And so um, she was like, oh, I'm passive aggressive. And I was like, yeah, sort of like when you asked me if it was the fan that I was running in the kitchen when we both know it was the fan in the kitchen. And so it turned into like this back and forth through text that I was having to deal with, which really, in my opinion, since you know you cleaned the kitchen and you know you cleaned my toaster, you just should have said, okay, cool. Like, that would have been it. Just, okay, cool. And then she tried to turn it into, well, it doesn't seem to be working out for you here. So maybe we should come up with a different solution. Bitch, I'm not moving out. I'm not. I have a lease. I have a lease with the building. I didn't. Just, you made sure I had a lease with the building. Because me personally, in a roommate situation, I would be fine just moving in. And then if things don't work out, I could just leave and get a lease somewhere else. But you made it so that you were very insistent about the fact that I needed to turn in my paperwork and I needed to go through the office and whatever else. You wanted to be so by the book by it. So now I am live here. I have a lease. I'm fully moved in. I'm working on a lot of shit. I'm not going to take time out to move. I mean, like, unless, which we still have to talk in person because that's where we ended up leaving it finally. But I will let her know in person. If you want to pay for my full moving cost, like movers, because uh, I'm not moving this shit again, like, you know, until a year from now. And by then, I'll just hire movers. I decided that. I had AJ help me last time. Thank you, AJ. But uh, I won't be hitting you up for that again. Next time I'm going to hire movers, that's what it is. I already decided that when me and AJ were moving all this shit. I was like, you know what? I could afford to just have somebody move this, especially across town. It would be one trip. They have a truck. They're used to doing it. They know how to do it. You know, if it was cross country, then you have to worry about scammers. But as far as people just moving your stuff from one apartment to the next, it, I've done that before in the past. And it's always been, you know, snag free. So that's what I plan to do. And so if she wants to pay for movers, if she wants wants to pay to buy me out of my lease and she wants to pay for my um you know first and last at my other apartment then i then great i'll i'll go ahead and move out I, i'll move out by march 1st if that's what you want you know i mean like if you're gonna pay for everything then cool but outside of that like i'm not gonna because you can't just send back okay cool and stop being passive aggressive like that doesn't sound like a thing that i should have to move out over I sent her a message when she asked me, you know, so what do you want to do? Cause it's not working out for you. And I was like, don't put this out. On, don't put this off on me. Don't try to make it seem like it's not working out for me. Like you're the one that's getting upset and doing passive aggressive stuff. So like, you know, and she was like, uh, well, you're the one that sent a text message. And I was like, yeah, cause I didn't think it was an emergency. And then I had to call you over it. Like text messages, is how most people, I don't even like people really calling me. Like if you have to, I'll be cool about it. But really whenever my phone rings, I feel like who's calling right now? What year is this? What year are they calling me from? Cause everybody sends text messages. So I was like, you know, I didn't think that was important enough for a phone call. I just sent you a text message. And so um, I was like, you know, when I told her not to put it off on me, she was like, well, then what are we going to do? And I was like, well, it sounds to me like you need to get your shit together and start acting like an adult because I'm not a guest here. I don't live in your apartment. I'm paying rent. I pay because I got the master bedroom. I pay more than half the rent. So it's. And I didn't throw that in her face because I didn't want to seem like a dick. But it's true. It, like, you know, I pay more to live here because I have the master bedroom. So you just need to get your shit together. That's all it is. And that's where I'm at with it. Like, she's going to have to get her shit together and just act like a regular adult and stop trying to be passive aggressive or else I won't do anything to make her mis miserable. I'll just freeze her out. You know, I just completely will pretend like she's not here all the time and 
not pay attention to anything she's trying to do or say. Like, I'm not going to have a power struggle in the place that I live. I'm not going to be uncomfortable in the place that I live either. Like, if you can't just behave like an adult, then I'm going to treat you like a child and I'm just going to ignore you because I don't hang out with children. I don't live with children. You know, I've discussed I want to have kids one day, but I'm not going to, you know, practice by treating my roommate like they're a kid. Like, you got to be a grown up just like I have to be a grown up. You know, I'm not the roommate that's asking her to wait on rent or, you know, any of that stuff doesn't happen. It's like things need to get paid. They get paid. Things need to get fixed. They get fixed. Like, you know, we had a situation where our water wasn't running hot. I ended up having to handle that because, you know, they put her off and they don't necessarily treat her like she's, you know, a priority and that's not something I'm going to allow. So, well, they can treat her how they want to treat her. Like, I'm not trying to be a dick, but, it, you know, I'm not going to go down there and be like, why didn't you listen to her? But I'll make sure that you do what it is I need you to do because that's just something that needs to happen. Our hot water wasn't working and it went on for long enough. And by long enough, I mean, I, th I dealt with it for a week where I was trying to figure everything out with them. And like, you know, I was very patient. And then when we got to the week mark and they had missed an appointment the day before, like completely forgot about me, completely forgot about us, you know, and I was waiting for them. It was very annoying. And so then they tried to be like, well, you know, because he came back. Because he was like, all right, well, then we'll uh, we'll handle you tomorrow for sure. And I was like, all right. But, you know, this is going on three days in a row now because, you know, there was a day where they thought they fixed it a week before and it turned out they hadn't. And it took like, you know, two or three days for them to get to us. And so, like I said, it was a solid week by the time that, you know, he had missed the appointment. And then he came back and then he was like. He gets here and then he's like, it turns out we're going to have to get the part. We're going to have to wait to get the part. So it's going to be another three or four more days. And I was like, that's unacceptable. And I went straight down to the office at that point because I had been, you know, there's a portal where you go online and do whatever. And so I had dealt with that. And, you know, I had tried to handle it the way that, you know, through their proper channels. And even the first time he fixed it, when he fixed it and it wasn't fixed because I just took his word and it was the water heater, you know, and so you have to wait. So I wasn't going to make him wait here 20 to 40 minutes to see if everything turned out the way it was supposed to turn out. You know, that would be ridiculous. So I ended up having to try it later on that night. And then when it didn't work, you know, it, when it still wasn't coming out hot, then I had to go ahead and hit them up and send them a message the next day. And I knew I was going to be right away. And so I was reasonably patient about everything. But since I thought it was just fixed when he said it was because I saw what he did, he put in a new there's a burner plate basically or, a you know, like a flame that's in there. And so it's a gas. It's gas. And so, you know, I saw the way everything worked and, you know, it looked like he did what he was supposed to do. And so cool, you know, the it was lighting and everything like that. So I was like, OK, well, then, you know, I went ahead and tipped him 20 bucks. But, you know, and he was super grateful for it, you know, as he was telling me he doesn't make shit like that was part of the conversation when, you know, I like I was watching him do what he did. And again, I wasn't like watching in a way like micromanaging or whatever. He asked me to be out there because I need to move something out of the way. And like, you know, then he just started talking to me and it was that kind of situation. Like, I don't know anything about a water heater. I'm not going to sit there and act like I do, you know, but he was explaining to me, he was like, it's actually this thing that we need to put in and this is the way we're going to do it. And I was like, okay, cool. You know? And so he was, but then he also let me know it was the first time doing it. And then he was like, you know, I don't really get paid shit here anyway. And I was like, oh no. And so, you know, that's my default. You know, <laughs> I'm that guy. I'll be like, oh no, you're not doing well. They don't take care of you. And so, uh, <laughs> but so then he was telling me that. And so when he was done, you know, I tipped him 20. But when I tip you, I don't expect you to be chop chop, but I do expect you to be a little bit chop chop. You know what I mean? Nobody else is tipping you. So if you see my unit come up again, my unit number, and it's the same thing, the water heater, then like treat me with some respect. Don't miss an appointment. And it was him again. They missed the whole appointment that one day. 
And so, and there was another day before that where he was supposed to come out and he was like, oh, the guy that actually is more of an expert on that or really does know how to do that, he's not here today. And that was a day that I had been waiting for him too. But, you know, he didn't tell me that until the end of the day. He was like, I messed up. The guy that was supposed to be here wasn't here. And so I was like, all right, cool. So, um, I, like, you know, so then I did march down there to the office and I was like, mm, no, this shouldn't be happening like this. And so I really had to press them to make them do it. And they did it that day and ended up getting done within, you know, an hour and a half or so. And because they had to dra drain the whole water heater and then do the, the, there was a piece that had eroded. And so they had to put another one in. They got it from another unit. And so, you know, it's like, don't fucking try to play me. But anyway, like I said, I handled that. And so, it, like, you know, I handle all the things that I'm supposed to handle as a roommate. I make things happen the way that they're supposed to happen. So I'm not going to put up with a lot of extra shit. And this, again, is where I mean, like, being a good friend is, like, I'm sorry that we're roommates. I'm sorry that you lied to me and you made it seem like you were more cool about things than you were actually cool about them. I'm... Sorry about all of that. I wish you had been honest because I just would have stayed in my apartment. Really, I wish you had never called me to tell me that you wanted a roommate when really what you wanted was somebody to just make sure that you were able to keep your apartment. Like, that's what you wanted. You didn't want a roommate. You just wanted to be able to keep your apartment and you thought you were going to be able to, like, maneuver it so that I would make myself smaller or whatever you thought was going to happen. But that didn't happen. And I'm sorry your plan didn't work out the way that you wanted it to work out. But... That doesn't mean I'm going to change what I'm doing. And at this point, I guess I'm stuck being your friend in that way, in the way that you're either going to shape up and do what you're supposed to do, or I'm just going to completely ignore you and you're going to learn your lesson that way by me just freezing you out. Anyway, everybody, thank you for watching. This has been Ty Rivera, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. Stay unbothered.